Denny Hamlin is able to hold off a charging Kyle Larson in the closing laps to get his third win of the season. Let's talk about NASCAR at the Monster Mile. Hello everybody, welcome to Dirty Air. I'm your host Alex Lambert and let's talk about NASCAR at the Monster Mile Dover International Raceway where Denny Hamlin is able to get his third win of the season tying William Byron for most wins this year and he had to do it by holding off a charging Kyle Larson in the closing laps of this race, sort of air blocking is a new term uh, that, that's been used more uh, more so recently. We'll talk about the finish to this race. We'll go through the top drivers of the day. We'll talk about our top 10. A fairly tame race uh, except for one big crash. We'll obviously talk about that. We'll go uh, quick, take a quick look at the playoff standings as well, but let's go ahead and talk about NASCAR at Dover where Denny Hamlin is able to charge to the front and get another win this season, uh, his third win of 2024, tying him with William Byron for most wins this year, each at three apiece. We'll take a look at that playoff grid a little bit later on as well, but Denny Hamlin was able to capitalize today. The pick crew was really important today for every team, especially uh, Dirty Air was certainly playing a role. Clean Air was definitely a major advantage at this racetrack, which it has been at this racetrack more than others, even before the new car. Uh, Dover's always been uh, a racetrack where Dirty Air plays a key role, even even you know long before the, the, the new car or the, even the Gen 6. So that certainly was a point of conversation going into the race is how important the pit crew will be. And Denny Hamlin's pit crew was on tap. Denny Hamlin's pit crew, that second to last stop, that was the third fastest pit stop this season in NASCAR. So Denny Hamlin's pit crew was on top of it. Denny Hamlin was on top of it by pulling away from Larson. In the end, Kyle Larson did have a charge. He was closing in on him. It looked like Larson was a little faster, but Larson just was unable to get there. Denny Hamlin tried to, trying to air block the entire way. And even Kyle Larson said in his post-race interview, air blocking is so doable at this racetrack. It's it's easy to do, in Kyle Larson's words, at this racetrack, which we've seen Kyle Larson do at other tracks, but very easy to do at Dover, which was just holding... Um, Kyle Larson back. I was looking at Kyle Busch's in-car cam and a few other in-car cams where on that final restart, like Daniel Hemrick was doing it just a little bit. Noah Gragson was doing it a little bit to Kyle Busch. Uh, and it just takes so long to get around him air blocking because you know, you know, Noah Gragson's car is probably not quite as fast, probably not a top five car, but you know, able to air block Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott a little bit there in the final run, uh, was able to stay in the top five for a little while. I think he ended up finishing the sixth position. So air blocking was certainly a key component. Uh, if I pull up the big three drivers of the day, obviously we're just going to go with the top three. This is, the I think, the first time I've just gone with the top three. I wanted to slide Kyle Busch in there, but I just don't quite think he was as fast as Truex or Larson or Hamlin. Obviously, Hamlin was really quick when he got out, at, uh, out in the front uh, in the clean air. He was able to just completely pull away, uh, not even close there for a long time. Then Kyle Larson sort of reeled him back in there in the final run. And then Martin Truex Jr., MTJ, uh, was sort of the third car. Truex Jr. led a few laps early in the mid-race, uh, had a solid run going. Then Truex had a little bit of damage on the race car after a pit road incident. Um, and then running into the back of somebody on one of the restarts. So Truex Jr. certainly, uh, even in his interview post-race, thought that this was a race car that could have won. And I think any of these three cars on this list could have won this race. It was all about clean air at the end. Uh, if Kyle Larson was leading, Denny Hamlin charging, I think Kyle Larson would have won. Same thing with Truex or, or, or whichever place you want to put them in. But, but certainly those three cars were really fast. You could even put Kyle Busch into that topic as well because he was certainly fast today uh, too. Uh, but those are definitely the big three, right? Denny Hamlin, your winner. Kyle Larson second uh, and Truex Jr. third. And Truex Jr., you have to feel a little sorry for him because this is, once again, he's so close to getting that win. You go back to Richmond where he was just a couple laps away. You go to a few other races where it's the one that got away. And Truex Jr., maybe... You can go back to 2016 where this happened all the time. Truex Jr. is maybe one of the drivers that has lost more races that he should have won than anybody else in the field. I mean, I can think of a few guys like Denny Hamlin, like Kyle Busch, but I don't know if there's any quite as much as Martin Truex Jr. has lost races that he should have won, especially recently. So, uh, And you go back to 2022 as well, 2016 a lot. Really frustrating for Martin Truex Jr. Let's go ahead and take a look at the entire top 10 here. Once again, I talked about the big three. Kyle Busch, really good day for him, was able to get some stage points. Once again, going into this race, he was below the cut line. Now, Busch slides up to 11th in points with his fourth place finish and 17 above the cut line, 13th on the playoff grid, which is a certain, certainly a little bit different. 
really solid day for that eight team because we've been looking all year. Do they have speed? Can they run up front? And they had speed today. They actually fell back to like, I want to say they fell back to 11th at one point in this race, was able to make some adjustments on pit road and come all the way back up, finish in the fourth position. That's a solid day for Kyle Busch. Shows that they have speed. Austin Dillon, was, his teammate, was obviously completely out of it all day long, but a nice day for Kyle Busch. Chase Elliott was able to break through some dirty air early on in the race as well. He started outside. I want to say he started 29th, maybe it was 30th. Started in the back of the pack today. Was able to come all the way back up, finish in the fifth position. And it didn't take. By the end of the first stage, the 120 lap stage one, Chase Elliott was already in the top 10. So Chase Elliott, really fast car this week as well. All the Hendrick cars were fast. Uh, once again, as we can see, three of the four in the top 10. A little bit of issues for Byron, which we'll discuss a little bit later on. But Chase Elliott, uh, once again, nice run for him in the nine car. Once again, one already this season. Punches sticking in the playoffs. Chase Elliott is a force to be reckoned with in 2024, which is certainly uh, contrary to what we saw a year ago today. Uh, Noah Gragson, a nice sixth place finish for him. Once again, using a little bit of strategy at the end, kind of got a, caught a break. There was a caution with, what was it, 70 laps to go, I think. It was Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Uh, uh, getting spun, hitting the inside wall. That was during green flag pit stops. That was a big break for a couple of guys. Daniel Hemrick as well in ninth place. Huge break for him and a big break for Noah Gragson. Was able to finish in the sixth position. But even outside of that break, Noah Gragson was once, once again able to stay in the top six. Right, He was actually fourth uh, with under 10 laps to go, but Noah Gragson, really solid driver this season. You talk about the awful rookie season last year, but this is a team that is trying to rebuild, trying to get better results that had a tremendous, had an awful season, uh, atrocious year last year, even with Kevin Harvick, Noah Gragson taking that team, trying to sort of be the leader maybe a little bit, as he kind of has been here to start out the season. Noah Gragson, obviously nice sixth place finish today, uh, the only SHR Ford uh, in the top 10. You saw a few of them not running well. I think Ryan Priest had trouble very early on in the race, ended up finishing dead last today, so a rough day, uh, no doubt, for the SHR uh, cars, except for Noah Gragson. Uh, once again, Noah Gragson, another top 10 this season, so having a quietly solid season for Noah Gragson this year. Ryan Blaney, nice seventh place finish, started second today. Still waiting for Ryan Blaney, as I talk about a few other drivers as well. Still kind of waiting for Blaney to get over that hump back to victory lane, right? I mean, this is your defending champion, right? Uh, this is a driver that we expect to win races multiple times in a season. He has multiple, multiple race winning seasons. Last year, got three wins, but he didn't start winning those races till the Coke 600. So I think there's no doubt in my mind, Ryan Blaney will get to victory lane. He's been running solid, had a couple of rough weeks, weeks before this, but solid Solid run for, for Ryan Blaney, getting some points as well, uh, but once again in the top seven today. Alex Bowman, we're still waiting sort of the same thing with Blaney, except it's a little more, you know, it's been a while for Alex Bowman, almost over two years now since he got his last win, which was Vegas at the beginning of the year, was at the third race of the year in 2022. Been a while since Bowman got the win. Looked like today he was in contention. He's been in contention this season. He's been getting points this season. He's well above the cut line right now. So a solid season right now for Alex Bowman. But once again, can he get over that hump, get to victory lane? Pit crew uh, wasn't as fast as Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson today, which obviously fell up, made him fall back just a little bit. I don't think the car was quite as fast as guys like Kyle Busch, Chase Elliott, which is why he ultimately finished behind them in the long run. But a solid day nonetheless for Alex Bowman. The first time in a while I looked at Alex Bowman and that said, okay, he's in contention. He can win this race. First time we've said that in a while for the 48 car. Daniel Hemrick talked a little bit about him. Same thing that happened with him with Gregson. Just kind of got a break with the caution, but was able to capitalize and finish in the top 10. Solid day, very solid day for Daniel Hemrick in the 31 Chevrolet. And then Ty Gibbs once again in the top 10. Didn't really see much of Ty Gibbs today. I was expecting him to run a little better. You know, at the start of the season, you know, the first eight, nine races or so, it looked like, oh, Ty Gibbs, He's going to win a race this season. He's in contention to win week in and week out. Sort of fallen off a little bit the last few weeks, but it's a really long season. Drivers come and go sometimes. Don't be surprised to see Ty Gibbs back in the top five, top three, potentially winning uh, in, the, in the next few weeks to come, uh, no doubt in my mind. Uh, there was a big wreck that I do want to talk about that was uh, midway through this race. It was Bubba Wallace getting loose as Bubba Wallace was trying to crack back into the top 10. Wallace was having a solid top 10 day. Uh, got sideways, not quite sure if someone got into the back of him or not, but he got sideways coming out of that corner. Really fast, concrete racetrack. You're very on edge, especially at the start of the race, especially with the sun, the heat beaming onto the racetrack on the racing uh, on that concrete surface. So Bubba Wallace just got loose, slides 
sound to the outside of the racetrack and call, involves Christopher Bell, William Byron. Once again, William Byron is having, I would say he had a breakout season last year, but is also having a really successful season this year. Is no doubt one of the, if not the championship favorite at this moment in time. So big deal to take William Byron out in the 24 car early on in this race. And then of course, Christopher Bell, the bad weeks continue. Once again, this is four bad races in a row for Christopher Bell. Very frustrating. Got caught up in trouble last week. Got caught up in trouble in Texas. Got caught up in trouble the week before that in Martinsville. He's been in some trouble lately, and we're going to have to continue to watch that moving forward for Christopher Bell because he's got to start putting together results. The pit crew hasn't been on tap. The momentum's down. The driver has not been running in the top 10 really consistently as we expected him to after that win in Phoenix. So certainly we'll have to see how long it takes for that 20 team to get back on tap. Adam Stevens, Christopher Bell, no doubt, once again, that they can get back into running the top 10. It's just been a really rough stretch right now, which is sometimes hard to recover from at this point in the season. So we we'll have to take a look and, and at that as well moving forward. Let's take a quick look at the playoff grid. Once again, I don't want to break this down too much. Once again, you have, you have Hamlin, Byron with three wins apiece. You have seven winners total this season. Daniel Suarez, Christopher Bell, the only two that are not in the top 16 in regular points that have a win. I do want to note that as well, which is sort of contrary to a year ago where we had everyone in the top 16 with the win. Uh, but you have Martin Trek Jr. safely in. Once again, he's kind of the only guy that's so far in. It's high up there in points that doesn't have that win. Everybody else is just a little bit closer. Uh, the ones you really want to watch, obviously, starts when you get to Kyle Busch because Busch is only 17 in. There's a bit of a gap from 12th to 13th. Then you have Briscoe in, Busher in, Wallace with a really rough day today is now only two in. Kozlowski two out. Once again, Kozlowski spun early on in this race. Had had trouble from the get-go today. Really rough day for Brad Kozlowski in the sixth car. You have Joey Logano, once again, two years ago, won a championship in this next-gen car. Seven points out right now. Rough season for them. Uh, certainly want to continue to look at that moving forward. But we're still a long ways away. We're only 11 races into the 2024 season, so we still have a long ways to go to the playoff starts. This will change a lot uh, before we get to the playoffs. Just wanted to sort of start showing this grid uh, as we continue to move forward. Um, getting closer to the playoffs. And, of course, it will look, we'll look more into it after the Charlotte 600 race after May, which is usually a point in time which I like to really start diving into the playoff grid. But that's really it. That's all there is to talk about for May. I would say it was a fairly tamed over race. I mean, we had the one wreck. Other than that, it was a solid race. It wasn't it wasn't exceptionally crazy. It wasn't crazy. It wasn't too wild. But it was a solid race. We had a lot of passing for the lead, a little bit of passing through the field. Certainly a solid Dover race today. Uh, and, and I enjoyed it myself, especially Kyle Wish getting that fourth place finish. But that's really it. That's all there is to talk about following this race. Like and subscribe if you like the video. If you do, I really do appreciate it. Please share the video. And of course, about Kyle Busch, once again in the top five, let's get rowdy.